welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be the Lone Ranger original air dates November 1st, 1943, and the title is Barbary Coast. This is part one of a three-part series. Let's get into it, and I hope you enjoy. A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Hurry, big fellow. I'll see In the days following the gold rush, there was a spot on the Pacific coast that decent people would like to forget. It was a section of San Francisco that had become a reeking, verminous headquarters for the worst type of riffraff from all over the world. Crime of every type ran rampant. The saloons and honky-tonk dance halls spawned murder at its vilest. The reeking foulness of the tawdry places was equaled only by the ankle-deep mud that served as streets. This was the Barbary Coast. Here there was no law. Violent death was commonplace, and a moment of carelessness was likely to send a man into a slavery that was worse than death. It was to the Barbary Coast that the Lone Ranger had to go to fight alone against all form of crime, to lay his life on the line as the price that we'd have to pay for losing. Arnold Gerson was as far removed as any man could be from the filth of the Barbary Coast. He was a big man in every way. He looked every inch the banker that he was, and his home was one of the largest of those on Knob Hill. Arnold Gerson loved two things more than his vast wealth, his son and his daughter. <laughs> oh, put the balance sheets away, Bates. For the first time in my life, I can't concentrate on figures. Not even when those figures represent your profits, sir? Profits? <laughs> I've had enough of profits to last for the rest of my life. From now on, Bates, I'm going to be a changed man. Oh, is that so, Mr. Gerson? Oh, I'll continue the business, but as soon as Sally arrives, you'll see much less of me around this office. Your daughter, sir. She's coming home from school in New York? Home, yes, at last. And now let me see. I must watch the news. The boat's arriving. Probably take the better part of two months. She's traveling by boat? Yes, around the Horn. But isn't that rather dangerous, Mr. Gerson? Dangerous? Why, her boat will... Well, perhaps I shouldn't speak about it. Well, why shouldn't you speak? 
You work for me long enough to tell what you think? Well, the Barbary Coast, the waterfront. <laughs> uh, you've been hearing stories. Uh, it's true stories, Mr. Gerson. Uh, you speak as if you knew your facts, Bates. I do. My brother went to the Barbary Coast simply out of curiosity. He was struck on the head. He recovered consciousness on board his ship, outward bound. Shanghai, eh? Well, that's too bad. He and 50 other men. They were gone for two years, and when they finally came back, well, Mr. Gerson, my brother was a broken old man with white hair at the age of 23. Well, I'm sorry about your brother. But after all, Sally could hardly be Shanghai to help sail a ship around the world. Some of the men who sail the seas are inhuman monsters who would stop at nothing to make easy money. If Miss Sally happened to be on a ship owned by a friend like or a fiend like Shark Larson... Shark Larson? The owner who made my brother a walking dead man. Oh, if he, for example, knew that her father was as wealthy as you and willing to pay any ransom for the safe return of a daughter... Bates, you're borrowing trouble. Miss Sally isn't on one of those tramp cargo ships. She's traveling on a fine new passenger carrier. Many fine new boats were bought with blood money. Shark Larson, I near, has a new boat. Huh? Bates, why can't something be done about this? This Barbary Coast? The right man, and to do something, hasn't come along. Someone like the Lone Ranger were to come here. Someone like a knight of old who couldn't be touched by Bates, bribes. you shan't disturb my peace of mind. Sally's on a good ship. She told me all about it. Well, then let me see. She mailed this letter from Newport News. That's the last port of call in the United States. What is the name of her boat? The Claire de Lune. What did you say? Claire de Lune, why? May heaven protect the girl. That is Shark Larson's boat. <laughs> The weeks that followed the clerk's startling announcement were filled with worry for Arnold Gerson. His vast wealth meant nothing compared to the safety, the life of his daughter. Then, one day, the padre of a mission in the southern part of California found an Indian and a 14-year-old boy filling their canteens from a fountain in the patio. You look as if you'd traveled a long way. Yes, sir, we have. We came all the way from Texas. Alone? Well, there was another man with us. He's camped not far away. He would not come here? <laughs> he didn't know there was a mission here. Neither did we. Oh. We came to refill our canteens and ask about the trails to the north. You came from Texas? Why, yes, sir. And you? Ah, me to come too. I'm sorry the reverse is not the case. Sorry you're not going to Texas. Golly, if there's something we could do for you, I'm sorry too. You see, the man who travels with us is going up to the Redwood country. That's why we're here. The man who travels with you, does he know many in Texas? Oh, yes, sir. To all who go east from here, I give a message, a plea. And um, what that? In San Francisco, there's a man whose wealth is great. But he would give all of this wealth to the man who could bring his daughter in safety to her home. And scourge the beasts that threaten her. And the place that bred those beasts. Dolly. Tonto, maybe we should tell Wait, him... Wait, Dan. Speak, friend. A padre... You ever hear of Lone Ranger? A Lone Ranger? You have heard of him? You know where he can be reached? Everyone who leaves here is given a message, a most urgent message. Find the Lone Ranger. Tell the Lone Ranger that Arnold Gerson needs him. Tell the Lone Ranger that California needs him. Tell him of the Barbary Coast, of the crime, the horror. If he only knew, he would come to us. Taro, this is what I... Dan, Wait expression on your face. I look in your eyes. Speak. Tell me what you know. You look over there. Horseman, come this way. Another who thirsts. But about this man who wears the mask? Color on white horse, wear mask. White horse? Padre, fellow who ride this way. You see him? In answer to a thousand prayers. That's the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger came to the Barbary Coast alone. He was disguised as a prospector as he walked from the waterfront along Pacific Street. To far beyond Kearney Street, there was a blaze of lighted dance halls, melodians, and cheap cafes. By far the most pretentious was Dirk Gimlet's place, known as the Thunderbolt. Though every form of crime was almost constantly displayed in the Thunderbolt, 
the police found it practically impossible to get convincing proof. Dirk Gimlet made his own laws, and all of them were ruthless. Hey, Claw. What's the matter, Gimlet? There's a stranger here. Did you see him? Yeah, I seen him. He's a big gent. Looks like he could do all right on a ship. Well, what are you waiting for? Drug him and drop him to the cellar. I've got an order from one of my best customers. He wants 50 men to man his ship. I've been trying to drug that critter, but he won't take a drink. And use a club on him. Get him unconscious into the cellar. Hold on, Gimlet. There's something else I want to speak to you about. Then speak. What are you waiting for? See the man standing alongside the tall one? Sure. How about him? Did you want to send him back to sea? No, why not? He just came off from Captain Gale's ship. Yeah? We shanghaied him about six months ago, remember? Well, send him out again. What's the odds? All right. I'll send to him. Wait. Huh? What's his name? I don't know. He just calls himself Jimmy. That's all I know. Jimmy, is that the only name you have? It's the only one I'll use, stranger. I ain't proud of the life I've been leading. But you say you spent the last six months at sea. Not because I wanted to. Is it true that you were knocked out and carried to the ship? <laughs> That's common enough. There was 20 of us woke up on the ship at the same time. And all had got the same treatment. Two of the men were dead from the handling they got. Another was dead from the drugs that were used to make him unconscious. Well, you be mighty careful, stranger. And they'll get you. Thanks for the warning. Well, Jimmy, doggone good to see you back home again. How was the trip? You know what those trips are like, Claw. Jim, I was sorry about it, and so was Dirk Gimlet. Sorry? <laughs> Gimlet sorry? If he's sorry, what's he in this business for? Jimmy, you know better than that. Gimlet wouldn't hurt anyone. I know that Gimlet's just about the most important man on the Barbary Coast. He's got every skipper that puts into the bay hiring him to get a crew together. Sure. But all he does is hire men to man the ship. Hire him my eye. He's got trap doors all over this place. And once a man stands on one, he drops to the cellar. And that's all he knows till he wakes up on a ship heading for Singapore or someplace. Well, Jimmy, if that's the way you figure, there's no use my trying to tell you different. Uh, I suspect you landed here broke. Yeah, I'm broke because I jumped the ship. I lose six months' pay by not staying aboard till she sets sail again. But I wouldn't take another trip on that tub for six years' pay. Not for a million dollars. Now, look, Jim. Let me show you how Gimlet feels. He knows what a deal you got, and he wants to prove you ain't the end to blame. Yeah? He's collected your pay from the skipper. He has? Sure. Come on with me, and I'll get it for you. It's in the office. Is it this on the level? Sure it is. Well, excuse me just a minute, stranger. I'll be right back. Very well. Step right in, Jimmy. The cash is there in the desk drawer. Gimlet is a right gent. Maybe I did have him wrong. But I thought he... <laughs> Who cares what you thought? That'll do for me, Claw. Gimlet, you sure scored a bullseye with that club. Open the trap door. I'd give a lot to know what he says when he wakes up and finds himself on another ship putting out to sea. He'll be a plenty sore about it. Hello, below there. Hello. We got another one for the skipper. We'll drop him down. Right. We got a mattress for him to drop on. Don't Here we? he comes. There. We got him. Close the trap door. There. He knew about that trap door and he wouldn't stand on it. We won't have to drag the other man. We'll get him standing on the trap door when we slug him. Look through the peephole and see if he's still out there. Yeah, he's still there. I'll go get him. Well, did uh, Jimmy get paid off? Sure he got paid. He was so surprised he couldn't say a word. He wants you to join him. He does? Yeah. Maybe you'll treat to a special banquet to celebrate. Will you follow me to the back room? Of course. Lead the way. Wait till you hear about what Jimmy has to say about Gimlet. Gimlet is one man that's full of surprises. <laughs> Just wait and you'll see. In here? That's right. The boss is there. So you're Dirk Gimlet. That's me, stranger. Shut the door, Claw. Right. Now, if you'll step just a little closer to my desk, I'll show you something. Maybe you will, Gimlet. Maybe I'll have something to show you. The 
curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. The Lone Ranger, disguised as a prospector from the Gold Hills, went to the Thunderbolt, Dirk Gimlet's place in the Barbary Coast. He was in the most dangerous spot in America, in San Francisco's underworld, trying to learn that which would help him strike at the gangs that flourished there. He stood on a trap door in front of Gimlet's desk. Just a few moments earlier, a young sailor had been dropped through that door to the men who waited below. Gimlet... I've heard about you and your place here. Oh, you have? I didn't come unprepared. Claw, stand where I can see you. Hey, who are you? You don't talk like a prospector. Where are you from? Many places. Well, why don't you drop me through the floor, the way you've done with others? By thunder, you're asking for it. Here it is. He's coming down! All right, come on. Want some more? Keep back, Claw! Oh, oh, oh. Just get him alone! Get him! Fire at him! In the summer glow of the darkness, the Lone Ranger became a fighting fury, and one of the six men drew up, and the Lone Ranger's guns barked. At close range, his powerful arms swung in staggering blows with the added force of the heavy guns he gripped. That's the last of them, Gimlet. Come on down here and see what you can do. Close that trap door. Close it, Claw. Hurry! Now to get Jimmy out of here. I hear water. The cellar must come out on the shore near here. Oh. Steady, Jimmy. I'm taking you out of here. Let, let me down. You're not strong enough to walk. Wh- wh- now listen it? to me. Don't interrupt. They tried to shanghai you again. All six of them are knocked out. We're getting away from here. Carrying the thin young sailor, the Lone Ranger followed the sound of the water until he came out of a tunnel to a narrow beach where starlight showed a skiff was drawn up on the shore. Now you can stand, Jimmy. You... You got me out of there. That boat was waiting to take you and several others on board another ship. I know, but... Why'd you save me? I want to learn a lot from you. But I can't tell you anything. You can tell me a lot about Gimlet, the Thunderbolt, the Barbary Coast. After the Lone Ranger had learned about Gimlet and the Barbary Coast from the sailor he'd rescued, he made his plans. The following day, he dressed in the clothes of a successful businessman and disguised his unmasked face. Then he went to the banking offices of Arnold Gerson. Oh, come in, please. That'll be all for the present, Bates. Yes. Won't you sit down? Thank you, Mr. Gerson. My clerk told me that you said you could deliver a message to the Lone Ranger. You may be sure that he will hear whatever you choose to tell me. Who are you? Is that important? No, I guess not. There's something about your... Yes? Your face. I can't quite understand. It's something... I've seen the Barbary Coast, Mr. Gerson. Well, you have. But I consider you a most fortunate man. Fortunate? Few people of your type were able to leave there without disaster. So I've heard... You can deliver a message to the Lone Ranger, you say? Yes. Uh, I wish I could speak to him personally. He might find it inconvenient to come here, Mr. Gerson. He conceals his face behind a mask. Why? Because he doesn't want his face to be known. It uh, would interfere with the work he does. You, uh, you know this Lone Ranger? 
No one knows him better. I'd pay any amount. He wouldn't accept money. Could he be impelled to act if he knew what went on here on the Pacific coast? I'm sure he'd feel that there was need of law. There's a ship named Claire de Lune. The owner is a man called Shark Larson. My daughter sailed from New York on this boat. Yes? Weeks ago. Boat has just put into the bay and the owner has delivered a letter from my daughter. May I see the letter? Yes, here. It's a request for money to be delivered to her by the owner, Shark Larson. Hmm. Quite a sum. Oh, I'd pay it gladly if I thought it would bring Sally home safely. This doesn't say where she is. No. It's evidence that Larson has made her a captive at some port between here and New York. Might be any one of a score of places in South America or Central America. There's no way of knowing. Obviously, Mr. Gerson, this is nothing but a thinly veiled demand for ransom. Yes, I'm aware of that. You'll hand that cash to Larson, and he supposedly will deliver it to your daughter to... Well, she claims to need it to pay her debts. Preposterous. May I have this letter? To deliver to the Lone Ranger? You'd want to study it. Yes, you may have it. Thank you. Oh, one thing more. Yes? Let us suppose the Lone Ranger did want to come here. As you say, he couldn't wear the mask without attracting attention. Well, that's true. He'd probably disguise his face. Probably. It would give his features a rather fixed look, wouldn't it? Mr. Gerson, are you going to be at your home tonight? Yes. Oh. Who else will be there? Well, my wife passed away several years ago. It'll just be my mother, grand old lady. My son, who's just 14. 14? And he's going to be home for two days, then he'll leave for school. Why are you so interested in my son? The Lone Ranger has a young friend, the same age. Oh? You might hear from the man you seek tonight, Mr. Gerson. Good day. Good day. That man, I... I can't be wrong. Yeah, what's this? I... He left it for me. Gerson realized the truth as he saw a small object on his desk. In realizing that truth, he understood that the Lone Ranger was a man of disguises, that he was quite unlikely to appear again as the gentleman who had just left. Bates, Bates, come in here. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Gerson, what's the matter? Close that door. Yes, sir. Bates, look at this. He left it. A bullet? Is that a warning? Warning, no. No, this is no warning. This bullet is silver. Bates, the man who just walked from this office, was the Lone Ranger. He has come at last. Thank goodness. One man, one man, Bates, against the Barbary Coast. Before he returned to his camp, the Lone Ranger stopped at a small hotel. He entered as a well-dressed man, and a few moments later came out as a prospector. In this character, he took his great horse, Silver, from the stable attached to the hotel and rode from the city. Then he gave the mighty stallion the familiar command. Come on, Silver! Across the open country, the white horse fairly flew until the trees at the base of a hill were reached. Then, a moment later, the Lone Ranger came to his camp where Dan and Tonto rose to greet him. Behind the Indian was the fellow named Jimmy. Ho, oh, oh, ho, Silver, ho, oh, boy. Dan, Tonto, how's Jim? Him all right now. Uh, me take care, Silver. Thanks, Tonto. My head's a lot better, but they sure gave me a mighty hard crack. Now don't get up, Jim. It's lucky you weren't killed. Oh, those bilge rats wouldn't have cared. Many a man has been killed by them. Stay where you are, Jim. Then, come with me while I wash off this disguise and get into my own clothes. Yes, sir. Golly, it doesn't seem natural for you to be going around like that. I'll have to use a lot of disguises around the Barbary Coast, Dan. I never use the same role twice. I've heard a lot about that Barbary Coast. Uh, Dan, listen to me carefully. Yes, sir? Uh, for some time, I, well, I felt that I wasn't doing what is best for you. What do you mean? Well, there are things a man should know, things you can't learn on the plains. Well, I've learned a lot with you and Tonto. Well, that's more than most fellas my age. Oh, but there are other things, history and literature, philosophy and science. Yeah, but those are things they teach in school. Yes, Dan. There. I'll put my mask on and get into other clothes and I'll feel more like myself. Stain tunnel fixes sure makes you look different. Ben, it's going to be a long, hard fight to win against the hoodlums of the Barbary Coast. It's a fight that you can't share. You're gonna send me away to school. 
You're going to miss your den more than you realize. Yes, sir. You're a brick to take it without making it harder for me. You know what's best. You're going to ride with me tonight. You meet a boy your own age. You'll go to the same school. I'll write and keep you informed of all that goes on. Well, when you leave the West Coast, will you take me back to Texas with you? That might be a long time in the future, Dan. There. I feel more natural. Let's go back to Jim. I want to speak to him. Yes, sir. We'll talk some more before you start for school, Dan. That's a lot I want to tell you. Yes, sir. Say, you, you sure look different. Well, that mask on, you look like the man I've heard about. Jim, I want to find a ship called Claire de Lune. Oh. She's anchored in the bay. Her skipper is Shark Larson. That's one man that's worse than the killer I sailed under. How can I get aboard the Claire de Lune? Get aboard her? Look... Men would mortgage their lives to stay off that ship. Larson is a man-killer. I want to board his ship. Well, you know what the Thunderbolt was like. Yes. Well, there's one place in the Barbary Coast that's worse than the Thunderbolt. And one man that's worse than Gimlet. Well? That's Drake Raven. Drake Raven is the king of the Barbary Coast. He works at getting men for Shark Larson. Drake Raven is paid $200 by Larson for every man he delivers to his boat. I see. Well... You ain't known to Dreg. You're a stranger. You just set foot in Raven's Roost and you'll wake up the next day on board Shark Larson's boat. And you'd be a darn sight better off if you was dead. Thanks, Jim. Come over here. I want to talk to you when I get back into other clothes. It, it's suicide. That's what it is. Tano. Dan, you plenty brave fella. You do what Lone Ranger say. He's going to put me in school. You like it there. But, but, Tano, what if something happens to him? Me, no. He's up against more danger than he's ever met before. He figures there's less than a 50-50 chance of living through it. That's why he wants me someplace where I won't be left. I mean, he doesn't want you to have the responsibility of taking care of me. Me savvy, Dan. Tano, can't you find some way to keep him from, from going into that, that raven's roost? He's used to men who fight with guns in the open. This is something new to him. Dan... Where Lone Ranger go, Tonto go too. Me watch him. What's Jim coming over here for? Me not know. Look here, you two. If a friend of mine was planning anything as risky as your friend is, do you know what I'd do? What? What you do? I'd take a gun and shoot him right here and now. I'd go that far to save him from the things that he's walking into. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. 
Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.